On a cold day in late February, Abdella Demmerbosch walks through the narrow stone streets of the Sur district of Diyarbakir, where he is mayor. He is proud of the neighborhood's churches and mosques, its statues to women's rights and renovated ancient walls. Demmerbosch has made a career out of restoring Diyarbakir to its better history and promoting a lost diversity when the city was home to Christians and Muslims, Sunnis and Aleves, Armenians and the Kurds that now make up the majority. As he walks, residents pop out of restaurants and shops to greet Demmerbosch and shake his hand. In Sir Demmerbosch is popular, a charismatic mayor who locals applaud for bringing prestige to their home. This is not so in the rest of Turkey, where his political party, the pro-Kurdish BDP, is seen as having close links to the Kurdish terrorist organization, the PKK. In spite of this reputation, the PKK's popularity can be seen throughout Diyarbakir, in Sur and beyond. PKK graffiti on the sides of Sur's apartment buildings, embellished with illustrations of the violence that is both damning and liberating, synonymous with Kurdistan as a whole, decorates the city. In a campaign indicative of the half-measures taken by the state to improve Diyarbakir, some PKK graffiti is scrawled over. The common BBBs still evoke precisely what they intend to conceal. Metal gates across from the BDP headquarters are covered with the cosmetically altered slogan. More recently, a new acronym has been rivaling PKK for Diyarbakir wall space, KCK, which stands for Union of Communities in Kurdistan. The Turkish state considers the KCK to be the urban arm of the PKK, and since 2009, more than 7,000 people, mostly Kurds, have been arrested for ties to the KCK. Outside the BDP headquarters, a large black flag hangs in memory of those arrested. Diyarbakir is considered by Kurds in Turkey, Iraq, Iran, and Syria to be the symbolic capital of Kurdistan, and its identity is deeply political. Protests like this small one are common, violent, and often end in arrests. Even, it seems, when children play, they do so in the shadow of Diyarbakir prison or PKK graffiti. Families decorate sitting rooms with photos of children lost to prison or the mountains. They watch Kurdish television, hoping for news and dreading the announcement of a death. But Diyarbakir's reputation is partly true and partly a stereotype, a damaging one that further isolates the southeastern city from the rest of Turkey. For Diyarbakir's 1.5 million residents, it is simply home. A Kurdish couple gets married in one of the city's many wedding halls. 11-year-old Medya Ormek teaches Kurdish to her school friends and then sits down to lunch with her family. A mother and a daughter prepare home-style food at their family restaurant. Girls play traditional music at a local art center. Men chat over cigarettes, taking a break from work. At a Sumer Park community center, kids take drama classes and adults learn to cook and sew. And Diyarbakir keeps growing. Enormous swaths of bulldozed dirt await the high-rise apartment buildings that will be quickly built there. New mosques take form inside a protective exoskeleton. While Demmerbosch strives to restore Diyarbakir's past, developers create space for its future, to the delight of its upwardly mobile and the frustration of its struggling poor, many of whom reluctantly moved from rural villages and are forced to cope with urban life. Like Istanbul to the west, Diyarbakir represents both Turkey's history and its future. Both cities captivate at this intersection of old and new. But unlike Istanbul, Diyarbakir is ruled by politics and the ongoing struggle and resistance of its Kurdish residents. After the tour of his district, Demirbash gives a tour of his office. Glass cases are filled with awards and trinkets. On a wall near his desk hangs a small tapestry that Demirbash made while he was a political prisoner. On his desk, he keeps three photos, 
One is of a young Kurdish boy who was murdered by police. This represents the past, Demirbash says. The other is of an elderly Kurdish activist, the future. The third is Demirbash's 16-year-old son, who the mayor has not heard from or seen since he ran away to the mountains to join the PKK guerrillas three years ago. This, Demirbash says, is the present.